In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, God of grace and God of kindness, dear Heavenly Father, we bow deeply in front of you to worship and to adore you. You are the Almighty One. We do believe that no one has more power than you have. No one has more love than you have. No one has more wisdom than you have. And we thank you that we can know this. We thank you that we could experience this for so many times. We thank you for your guidance, your protection, for your help in our daily life. We thank you for all the blessings we could get in your house. We thank you for the salvation you offer us. We thank you for the future you've already prepared for us. Dear Heavenly Father, we come also to pray together. We pray for all those who are suffering, for all those who have pain, who are mourning, for all those who have to face difficult times, whatever these times consist in, you know them. Please grant them your help. Comfort them, and as soon as possible, deliver them from their burden. We pray for those who became weak in their faith. We do not want to abandon them. Please help them and heal their soul. We want them to enter with us the kingdom of God. Some brothers and sisters couldn't make it today to attend this service. Let them know that they are not forgotten and grant them also the strength and the blessing they need. Now, dear Heavenly Father, we are waiting for your word. We are waiting for your grace. We are longing for your peace and your blessing. Please let your spirit be powerful and let us experience your presence in our midst. Allow our beloved one from the yonder world to join us and grant us much more than we can ask with our words. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, for this service we have a Bible word out of the Acts, chapter 3, verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, it's actually a great joy for me to experience this gathering and this encounter with you and to be allowed by our Heavenly Father to share the Word of God and His blessing with you today. It was the wish, actually, of your district apostle that I, one day I come to Jamaica and visit you and... Uh, yeah, our Heavenly Father made it possible during this trip that I come to Jamaica. Sadly enough, it's not on a Sunday, it's in the middle of the week, and so many of our brothers and sisters could make it to come, and I feel really sorry for them, and I have a plea. Dear brothers and sisters, please share the blessing with them. Don't say, oh, we were the lucky one, and you, you couldn't make it. Oh, you were a second-class child of God. <laughs> Share the blessing with them, and let them know that they are loved by God, that they are loved by their brothers and sisters, and they are loved by the chief apostle too, by the way, and let them experience your joy and your blessing. We are family, and we want to share everything. The Bible word from today is uh, quite a very known one. It's about this story when Peter and John went to the, te to the temple and they met a man, and this man was lame. He was a poor man. He was a man aged over 40 years old, and since he was born, he couldn't move, he was lame. So he was, for 40 years, he had been totally dependent on others. He could do nothing, he could not work, he could not, not earn his living. He was fully dependent on others, and every day they brought him to the door of the temple, and they 
placed him there, and so he could ask for some money to get some money to, to leave and to buy some food because he had just nothing. So when he saw Peter and John arriving, he thought, oh, these men will give me some money. And he asked for some money. And Peter said, no, I have nothing. I cannot, I have no silver, I have no gold, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And Peter took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. He stood up, he walked, and entered the temple with the apostles, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. A nice story. But for sure, it's not just about the story of this man. This story is an image of salvation of men. This man was lame, he couldn't move, he was fully dependent on others, and by himself he couldn't enter the temple. The temple in that, pla in that time was the dwelling place of God where the people of God could meet God. In the temple, they said that God lives, dwells in the temple, and to meet him we have to come to the temple. But this man couldn't enter the temple. He was lame, so he had no possibility to meet God. This man is the image of the sinful man who lives under the domination of sin, the sinful human being. Since the fall into sins, man is lame in the sense that he cannot come to God. He is absolutely unable to come to God he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot be with God. He is separated by the sin. And God sent his son, and his son sent his apostles to deliver men from this domination of sin and to give them back the freedom so that they can decide about their future and they can receive, can receive forgiveness of sins, and they can meet God and enter into his kingdom. Peter and John, they told to these men, they gave, them, gave him a word, an order, one can say, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right man, by the one tent. What does do the apostle today? They preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They announce forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus Christ. And they touch the people. They dispense the sacraments. They baptize them. They touch them with the water, with the imposition of the hand. And that's the, the meaning of this thing. Peter talked to him and touched him. The apostles today, they bring salvation to people, they preach in the name of Jesus Christ, and they dispense the sacraments. They touch them, that's the sign that something is going on. So that's the idea. And once people are baptized and listen and believe in the word of God, they can enter the kingdom of God, then can walk to God. So that was the task of the apostles in that time. That was, is the task of the apostles today. But uh, these men had to do something. And each time I read this story, it's, it's just incredible, you know. This man has been lame for 40 years. And now Peter comes and just say, stand up. He was waiting for some money, and Peter says, stand up. I wonder how I would have been reacting. Oh, I know me quite well. I was, you missed it. I, I cannot move. Look at me. I cannot stand up. I need some money. I'm hungry. I cannot earn my living. I need you to help me. Give me some money instead of nice words. How can you ask me to stand up? Understand what I mean? 
That was his need. I need some money. I have nothing to live with. He had to believe in the word of Peter and to accept that this was the help and to do it. Brothers and sisters, many people come to God today and they claim and they explain their needs. I am poor, I'm sick, I'm missing this, I'm lacking this. I need you to help me in my daily life. But Jesus didn't come on earth to deliver men from their suffering, to redistribute the money and to change the society. He didn't send his apostles to heal the sick ones and to get rid of the injustice and to fix everything in today's society. He sent his apostles to make salvation accessible, to deliver men from sin and to enable them to enter the kingdom of God. Sadly enough, not all Christians accept this idea. And they say, no, no, no. We want God to help us in this life. We want God to do a miracle. If you are apostles, you have to do a miracle. If you are really a Christian, you have to intervene in society and to repair what's wrong and to fix things. But that's not the task. And when we say, sorry, we are not sent for this as apostles, we are just here to announce salvation, to dispense the sacraments and to preach in the name of Jesus Christ, they get upset. They do not accept this. That's one aspect. Let us be aware that God has sent his apostles to bring salvation, to lead us into the kingdom of God, not to fix things on earth. And then we have to believe in the preaching of the apostles. And what are they are preaching? They are preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. They preach the gospel. And sometimes people tell us, but what you are preaching there, that's just not possible. You are dreamers. You are not realistic. How can you say that you have to obey all the commandments? You have to forgive. You have to love your enemies. You, you are crazy. That doesn't work. That's just not possible. So many say, that's not possible in our society today. How can you ask you, us to be honest, not to lie, and to respect all the commandments? Look at the society. There's so much bad things, so many bad things, There's so much corruption, whatever. It's not possible to be honest and to tell the truth. One has to believe that it's possible to live according to the gospel. And that's not that easy. Others say, but look at me. In my own situation, my personal situation of today, I cannot do that. How can you ask me to forgive this man? How can you ask me to renounce this? In my position, that's just not possible. I cannot do this. And others say, for instance, what you're announcing, the return of Christ. Oh yeah, Christ will return and we go to heaven. How do you imagine that? That's just not possible. That's a dream, that's not realistic. I could tell many other examples, but you, you, you've got the meaning. We have to believe that what God is asking us through the apostles, that it's possible for us to do it. And not say, as the layman could have said, but I've been lame for 40 years. How can you want me to stand up? It's not possible. No. Dear brothers and sisters, let us accept the preaching of the gospel. If God wants us to do something and to act according to his will, it's possible to do it. God will never ask us to do something knowing <laughs> it's impossible. He's not able to do it. If he tells us to do it, he will help us to do it, and it's possible. So the first act, we have to believe in the preaching of the gospel and saying this applies today 
here for me. That's true faith. We believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's for today, it's for me now and here. Okay, so he believed and then he stood up and he began to walk. And he walked not somewhere. He walked with the apostles to enter the temple. We have believed in the preaching of the apostles and one day we had to decide, yeah, I want to follow the apostles. I want to enter the kingdom of God. I will follow them until into the kingdom of God. And we have begun to walk, to go forward, to come closer to God. That's our decision. And this day we've promised when we were baptized, when we were sealed, when we were confirmed, yes, I do want to follow the apostles. I do want to march to heaven. I want to enter the kingdom of God with the apostles. I want to be prepared for the return of Christ. That was our decision. And my brothers and sisters, we are walking to heaven. We are moving forward. We want to have eternal fellowship with God. And we have decided we go with the apostles. We do not go our own way. We go, as this man did, with the apostles to enter the kingdom of God. You have begun to walk. Is there any reason to stop? Is there any reason to give up? I don't think so. Sure, sometimes we are disappointed, something happens in church, some prayers are not answered, some wishes are not fulfilled. That's true, absolutely true. But let us ask ourselves, is there any serious reason to give up and stop walking stop moving forward to the kingdom of God. I don't think so. That's our goal. That's the goal of our life. That's our reason of living. We want to have eternal fellowship of God and there's no reason to abandon. This man walked. He went to the temple with the apostles and while doing this, he praised God. And that's the nice aspect of this word. He was walking with the apostles to the temple, the dwelling place of God, and doing this, he praised God. And everybody could see him. My dear brothers and sisters, we are the people who is walking towards the kingdom of God with the apostles, and let us do it praising the Lord. What does it mean, praise the Lord? The first thing, the first way we can praise the Lord is giving thanks. I know it's not that easy to give thanks every day, but that has always been the case. I just remember, remember the story of Daniel, you know, the young man. He was living in the, with the King Darius, and he was a faithful Jew, he prayed to God every day, and one day this king decided, nobody is allowed to worship anybody else than me. Funny idea, but okay, that's the way. And if somebody prays to somebody else, to another God, and not to me, he will be killed. And they came and announced to Daniel, Oh, you can no longer worship your God. You have to worship the king. If you don't do so, they will kill you. And the reaction of this young man was a great one. He went to his place and he gave thanks to his God. In this awful situation, absolutely dramatic, he was threatened with death and he said, no, there's no reason. I have so many reasons to thank God, they cannot prevent me from 
giving thanks to God. Sure, we have to suffer, and Jesus takes it seriously. He shares in in our suffering. But brothers and sisters, let us not forget what Jesus has done for us, what God has offers us, the possibility to enter his kingdom. He has delivered us from sin. He forgives us our sin. He wants us to get the inheritance of Jesus Christ. There's, I cannot do the list. There are so many things, and they are so important. Even in the worst situation, we cannot sing hallelujah, but we have reasons to be thankful. Please never forget to give thanks to our Heavenly Father for salvation. Even if we are seriously sick, even if we have suffer, even in the worst situation, there's only, always one, maybe several reasons to thank God, just being aware Jesus Christ died for me. Just this is already a great thing. Jesus Christ died for me. The first way to praise God, giving thanks. But that's only the first step. There's another step. How can we praise God? The psalmists say, you can praise God in keeping your promise. Oh, interesting. A nice thought of the psalmist. You can praise God, or you should praise God, in keeping your promise, keeping your vow. Remember, when the apostle touched us, when we were baptized and sealed, when we were confirmed, we have promised something. We have promised to renounce evil, to do good. We want to overcome evil with good. We want to follow, to act according to the laws and the commandments of God. We want to obey. We want to believe. We want to remain faithful. And we promise that. Yeah, that's our goal. We want to enter the kingdom of God. And to do that, we want to be obedient. We want to be faithful. We want to stay with the apostles. The best way to praise God is to keep your promise. And to do what you have promised God to do, to renounce evil and to live according to his commandments, to his law. Keep your promise. That's another way to praise God. The lame man, he praised God, and this guy who always spent 40 years in front of the temple, now he entered the temple. Before he came to the temple to get some help and some money. And now, as he was able to walk, he entered the temple to become an active member of the community, an active Jew, and he joined the Jews who were worshipping and praising and serving God. First he was outside, asking, begging for something, and now, as he was healed, he went into the temple, the place where the, God, where the people could praise God and serve him. A nice way to praise God is to enter the church and to become an active member. I know you do that, brothers and sisters. We do not come to service. We do not come to God and say, oh, please, God, I need this, and I need this, and now I need some comfort, and now I need some help. I need some joy. I need some peace. I need some forgiveness. I need this, and I need this, and I need this. That's nice. You are begging. Okay. But what about you? Praising God means I'm part of the church and I'm an active member of the church. I want to serve the Lord, not just to receive, not just to be a beggar. I want to do something for the Lord. I want to serve him. I want to be active. I want to be an active member of the church of Christ. That's a nice way to praise God. A fourth now point, it's written in the letters of Paul, if you want to praise God, accept one another 
as Jesus has accepted us to the glory of God. So another way to glorify and to praise the Lord is to accept one another as God, as Jesus Christ, has accepted us. A wonderful way to praise God. Sure, we are different. Sure, everyone, without exception, everyone has his weak points, his weak aspects, and sometimes it's very complicated to accept and to make do with the weakness of our neighbor. Yeah, sometimes it's really irritating. I know what I'm talking about. But Jesus tells us, oh, I have accepted you, you know, as you are. I didn't want you to change, to be accepted by me. I accepted you as you are. And I accepted your brother. I accepted your sister. Please accept them as they are. Don't ask them to change, to love them. Love them as they are today. A nice way to praise the Lord. And because we are marching to heaven, we have so many reasons to praise the Lord. Let us also accept each other as Jesus has accepted us, without conditions, just because he is him and we are we. And the last point, also told in the New Testament, uh, if you want to praise God, be aware of the content of your conversations. Within the congregation, what are you talking about? Also a nice thought in the New Testament. To the glory of God, talk about salvation, talk about spiritual things, encourage each other, and be careful about the content of your conversation. I know that's my one of my preferred topic, but I'm sometimes concerned when our brothers and sisters talk together, when they write on Facebook, on whatever, when they phone, what are you talking about? Also in these conversations, we can, we should, we must praise God. Is that the case? Question mark. My dear brothers and sisters, let us also be aware that because of all the things that God has given us, we have so many to praise him. Let us praise his name, being a little bit more aware about what we talk about with each other. I often say, talk less about what men are doing, talk less about what the devil is doing, talk a little bit more about what Jesus is doing in the church, in the world. And there's a lot of things to talk about. Don't talk about men, don't talk about the devil, talk about Jesus Christ. And let us be a source of comfort and of courage for each other, talking spiritual talks. For sure, we cannot only talk about the Bible, but you, you understand what I mean. The background should be there. And one should feel in the content of our conversation, oh, there's some Holy Spirit in it. It's about Jesus Christ. We have decided. We believe the preaching of the apostles. We believe what they say. Jesus is coming. We are preparing ourselves for his return. We have to go the way of the gospel. What Jesus said, we have decided that's the truth. I can do it, and I want to do it. We have begun to work, and we won't stop working with the apostles until we enter the kingdom of God. And while doing that, we want to praise the Lord. We gave thanks. We have so many reasons to do it. We keep our promise. That's also something very important. Let us keep our promise. And we are aware of the conversations we have. We want to serve the Lord, and we want to accept one another. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that he was the one 
who sat begging at the, or the gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And many then were baptized because of what they've seen with this lame man. My brothers and sisters, our neighbors, the people living with us, looking at us, they know that we are not perfect and we will never be perfect. And nobody asks us to be without sin, but that's not possible. But they should become aware that you are walking, we are on a way, we are moving forward to enter the kingdom of God. And doing that, we are praising the Lord. And one should notice that. Jamaica, they are new apostolic Christians. They are not better than others, but they have something special. They are on their way. They are moving forward to enter the kingdom of God. And that's the greatest testimony we can give for Jesus Christ and for the apostolate. The proof that the apostles are sent by Jesus Christ to prepare his proud is not the increase of the membership in Jamaica. Some see that. Okay, the more successful the church is, the better, and they are true apostles. That's not the evidence that the apostles are sent by the Lord Jesus. They don't do miracles, and there's no huge increase of the membership on Jamaica. The evidence that they are sent by the apostles is your evolution. That people can see these men this woman is moving forward. Since I know them, they have changed. And that applies for everything. I began with me. I begin with me. Did I really change? You know, sometimes it's just interesting. Just do a list, the people you love. And check. Is the list longer than last year, or did it become shorter? Very easy to do. Did the list of the people I love become shorter or longer? Just one example. How long does it take me when I'm offended to forgive? Shorter or longer than one year before? Or do I react when I'm attacked, when I'm hurted? Better or not than six months ago? There are some very concrete examples. We want to move forward. And if our colleagues, our neighbors realize they have changed, that's the best testimony we can give for the activity and the sending of the apostles. All the people saw him walking towards the temple and praising God. And that's my wish for you, my dear brothers and sisters in Jamaica. Let the Jamaican people see the children of God are walking towards heaven and they are praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. This Apostle Storch is here too. He comes from Germany. He works also in many countries in Africa and elsewhere. He can serve us. And choir, please. My dear brothers and sisters, what shall I say? I should not say I belong to the group of the lucky ones, <laughs> those who are here in this divine service. Perhaps I may say I belong to the group of the thankful ones to be here. And when I come back to Europe, to God's people, where I, am, where I am living, I will share this thankfulness and that what we heard in the divine service this morning. The chief apostle told about the story of Apostle Peter and John when they met the lame man and explained us what it means in the spiritual sense. By this, I 
was remembered to a man who was lame too. He was lame in his inner man. This was the great prophet Elijah, a hero of faith in his time. He fought it for God against the idols, against the evil. Sometimes he was alone. But most often he won the fight against the evil because God was with him. This was his strength. But then a day came that Elijah realized that he was alone. It seemed that nobody else would trust God anymore. He thought he was the only one who would believe in the Lord anymore, uh, further on. And then he went, you know the story, into the desert and lay down under a bush and said to God, Lord, let me die. I cannot do anything anymore. I cannot be a tool in your hand anymore. There was no courage. There was no hope. The man was empty in sight. And God saw this and sent an angel. But what did the angel do? He did not carry Elijah and carried him to another place, to a better place, to a beautiful place. No, the angel said first, Elijah, get up, stand up, and look what I brought to you, two vessels, one with water and one with bread. And now get up, eat and drink. And then Elijah had to get up, and he had to eat, and he had to drink. But he got tired again and slept again, and the angel again came. And once again, he did not carry him because the angel saw he ate and he drank, but he is not able to go, he is still weak. Again, he said, eat and drink. And he did it again. And then he felt the new strength and he could go on and he could continue and fulfill his work for God. What does it mean for us? The angel I want to compare with our time is the Holy Spirit. And he's coming to us in the word of God in divine service. And then our sorrows are not away, as the chief apostle said. And our sickness is not away. The Holy Spirit says, come here, eat and drink. Listen to the word of God. Do the word of God. Receive the forgiveness of sins. Celebrate Holy Communion. And then you are strengthened in your inner man. And do it not only once, do it again and again. And then we can go our way in our life and in our faith. Amen. So that was the voice of Germany. I see, it's obviously the same spirit. <laughs> but your district apostle came too, and uh, I got it. It's this long trip to be here in Kingston, so I think it would be appropriate if he had the opportunity to talk to you and uh, to me, by the way, too. Do you have another song? Please. It was a day like no other. This man, all these years, came, and maybe at the end of the day, he could see he got a couple coins, and then he thought, tomorrow I can have some bread. But not on this day. On this day, everything changed. Everything would be different from that moment on. And I'm sure maybe in his heart he felt a little foolish. Here I'm asking the apostles for silver and gold. And if I believe when he speaks, I can walk. I never could do it before, but now I can. And I can at last 
go into the temple and be close to God and praise him. Brothers and sisters, when we imagine that, how foolish it is sometimes, we, we, look, we think our relationship with the Almighty God is to get things. And we don't realize what his intention is for us. He wants us to be with, be with us. He wants to give us salvation. He wants us to catch us up and be together with him. And then we must feel a little foolish sometimes asking for all of these things when his intention is so higher so much greater for us. But I can't get the picture out of my mind when the chief apostle said he went into the temple with the apostles and he was leaping. Picture that a, a moment, he's, he's jumping around. Well, what did that look like? He was so happy, so thrilled, so praising God that he jumped around. And I think about children, that's what they do. They, they skip and they jump and they, it's an expression of their joy, of their happiness. And we see that in the spiritual sense. Leaping means for a moment we leave this world and we come above. And brothers and sisters, when we feel so much in love with the Lord, that he offers this to us, I want you to be with me. I have a plan that you shall always be with me, and we want to make praise to him. Then we must have those kind of experiences, this leaping feeling that in our prayer, we, we stop everything in this world and we jump up. We know we can only be there for a moment, and then we will come back down again. But for a moment, I want to be closer to the Lord. In my prayer life, I want to be closer to him in the divine service is also such a moment. We leap up. You have all done that today. You have leapt away from your normal Wednesday work and activity in school. And for these moments, we're in the temple with the Lord. And we're enlivened. And we have this special feeling that we are so close. And yet we will have to come back down again. But the feeling in our heart makes us leap. We want to always be closer to him. We sang that in the hymn you just sang before, always closer, nearer. Brothers and sisters, what a wonderful transition. Then this day, not only this day, but the day when the Lord captured us and brought us to a new life, this day continues to generate praise, joy, and thanksgiving to God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, my dear brothers and sisters, it's also a special day today because we can celebrate Holy Communion together. And I think it's not every Sunday, every service that you can celebrate Holy Communion in such a big circle. And it's also something special for me to celebrate Holy Communion with you. Each time we celebrate Holy Communion, we think about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And yeah, sometimes you're a little bit more emotional than others. It's not always the same level when we celebrate Holy Communion. That's human, that's normal. But uh, what about today? Isn't that a day where we would be specially thankful that Jesus Christ died for us? and especially thankful just that he loves us. We say that so often, oh, Jesus Christ loves me. And sometimes I really do ask myself, but who am I that the perfect son of God, the only man on earth, who could overcome sin and evil, who has never committed any sin, he loves me, not just as an emotion or some relationship, he accepted to die for me, to suffer and to die because he wanted to save me and he wanted me to be able to join him in his kingdom. Isn't that a reason to give thanks? When we celebrate Holy Communion, let us also remember 
that you have promised something. You have promised to renounce evil and to live according to the will of God. Maybe there's one or the other point which says, I'm trying, I've been trying for 40 years as the man here, and I couldn't do it. Try again. Don't give up. It's not impossible for you to do God's will. If you really want it, you can do it. And let me add something. God doesn't consider the result. He considers the effort we make. And we should at least always be motivated and put really everything, use all our energy to overcome and to do God's will. The worst thing is to say, okay, I will never make it. I make do with it. I give up. Don't do this. Stay motivated. And if there's one thing in your life, you know that's not, not okay. It's not in accordance with God's will. Don't say, okay, I resign. That's, that's it. No. Try and try again. And tell God, I still want to overcome. Please help me. And he will help you. We celebrate Holy Communion together. Let us show God and one another that we accept one another as Jesus has accepted us. Imagine Jesus today would say, okay, you are okay, you are okay, you can come to my table, you receive Holy Communion. You not, you not, and you not. Oh, that would be terrible. He accepts all of us. Why should I not accept my brother and my sister? Why? Give me any good reason. If Jesus accepts them, why shouldn't I accept them? Let us accept one another. To prepare ourselves for Holy Communion, let us sing together out of the hymn 330, Just As I Am. Let us close this service with prayer. <coughs> Almighty God, dear Heavenly Father, once more we feel the need to come together in front of you to thank you, to thank you for your word, for your grace, for the peace of the risen one. Thank you for the communion we could have with one another and with our Lord Jesus Christ. The Heavenly Father, now be with your people for the future. Stay with them in their midst. Protect them. Bless their service and their offerings. And provide them all they need in their daily life. Once more we pray for those who couldn't attend this service. Let them experience that you are not forgotten by you. And provide them the strength and the peace they need as children of God. We pray for this country. Please grant also peace and safety. And let the people here in this country be able to live in a peaceful way. Provide them all they need in their daily life. Dear Heavenly Father, now please send thy beloved Son and shorten the time and take us all together to you, into your place. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.